73,000 BC, the Toba Catastrophe. Over 75,000 years ago, a single catastrophic event almost wiped out humanity. The exact date of the Toba supervolcano explosion in modern-day Indonesia is unknown, but researchers consider it the planet's largest volcanic eruption in the past 28 million years. An estimated 1,700 cubic miles of rock erupted from the Toba volcano and formed a crater lake that is visible even from space. As parts of Indonesia, India, and the Indian Ocean became covered by six inches of volcanic debris, ash and volcanic gases rose to the atmosphere, partially blocking sunlight. The partial darkness caused a volcanic winter, and worldwide temperatures reached five degrees. While it's impossible to accurately calculate how many humans succumbed to the decade-long volcanic winter, scientists have still tried to calculate the number. According to several researchers, the human population could have been reduced to as little as 3,000 to 10,000 people, nearly driving humanity to extinction. In 1993, science journalist Ann Gibbons connected the dots regarding a population bottleneck in human evolution around the same time as the Toba eruption. Soon, several scientists began to back up her theory. Five years later, Gibbons' research was further analyzed by anthropologist Stanley Ambrose, who claimed that genetic evidence from 75,000 years ago indicates a collapse in Homo sapiens evolution. Ambrose's theory asserts that most early humans in Europe and Asia perished, and only a small group survived in Africa by sheer luck. According to the Toba catastrophe theory, all modern humans descend from these few thousand survivors. Still, the theory has many critics. A 2018 study by Chad Yost seemed to prove that the eruption did not have a significant climatic effect on human numbers. According to further archaeological research, early Homo sapiens in India seemed to have survived the super-eruption in great numbers, and it is argued that there was no effect at all on Africa. Although the true impact of the Toba catastrophe is still debated amongst archaeologists, climatologists, and geneticists, the actual eruption is still the most significant volcano event ever recorded on the planet, and could potentially be considered the worst year in history for the human species. 1929, the American and United Kingdom stock market crash. The Roaring Twenties was an era filled with exuberant parties and lavish spending. However, it abruptly came to a halt during one fateful day in 1929, as the stock market crashed and an era of poverty and uncertainty took over. Following the recovery from World War I and the 1918 influenza pandemic, the 1920s was a decade of economic growth and overall prosperity. For years, the world's largest cities saw a boom in construction, unemployment rates were low, and automobiles and electricity were becoming a staple for the modern man. With the U.S. economy quickly recovering, the nation provided several loans for a European boom on the other side of the Atlantic. Still, production was declining by the end of the decade, and unemployment was rising, leaving stocks in great surplus of their actual value. On October 29, 1929, the so-called Black Tuesday hit Wall Street, in which investors traded over 16 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange in only a day, losing billions of dollars and wiping out investors. The event took place only a month after the London Stock Exchange crash, signaling the beginning of an era of poverty, low employment, and agricultural problems known as the Great Depression. Banks faltered all across the world, taking hundreds of thousands of families' entire savings with them. Also, hundreds of factories and institutions closed their doors forever, suddenly leaving people without jobs. By 1933, close to half the American banks had failed, and unemployment was approaching 30% of the workforce. The tides began to turn with the administration of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who helped lessen the worst effects of the Great Depression with the New Deal, a series of programs, public works projects, financial reforms, and regulations. Still, the American economy would not fully recover until after 1939, when World War II revitalized the American industry. The decade after the market crash was a total opposite of the Roaring Twenties, and the stock market crash of 1929 remained the deepest and longest-lasting economic downturn in the history of the Western industrialized world. 536. Global weather changes bring widespread starvation. When asked about the world's worst time to be alive, most medieval historians usually agree on a specific year from the Dark Ages, 
when everything went black. Apart from being considered one of the harshest periods in history, the year 536 unleashed a decade of darkness, the likes of which haven't been seen again. In 536, a mysterious black fog blanketed most of Europe, the Middle East, and even parts of Asia. Centuries later, researchers finally discovered the primary source of the fog, attributing it to a volcanic eruption in Iceland. The ash produced fog that blocked the sun, causing a sudden drop in temperatures during the day. The eruption was so large that it even altered global climate patterns, leading to failed crops, widespread famine, pestilence, and inevitable death. Chinese documents even claim snow and 35 degree Fahrenheit weather in the middle of the summer, kicking off the coldest decade ever documented for the past 2300 years. The year also became the watershed of a dark and miserable era that lasted for most of the remainder of the century. The cold and starvation caused a significant economic imbalance in Europe that only intensified when the first bubonic plague broke out in 541. This pandemic obliterated up to one half the population in the Byzantine Empire. The source of the fog remained unknown for centuries, but in the 1990s, historians examined centuries-old tree rings in Ireland and uncovered staggering clues. The Dark Age led to a late antique Little Ice Age that mainly happened overnight, and with this late realization, accounts of the era became more horrifying than ever. Byzantine historian Procopius succinctly described the phenomena and concluded, quote, For the sun gave forth its light without brightness, like the moon during this whole year, and it seemed exceedingly like the sun in eclipse. And from the time when this thing happened, men were free neither from war, nor pestilence, nor any other thing leading to death. 1816. The year with no summer. Following the April 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in modern-day Indonesia, the resulting volcanic winter generated what scientists refer to as the last great subsistence crisis in the West. With freezing temperatures and snow in the middle of June, no sign of warming up by the end of July, and a lethal frost in August, accounts from the 1816 occurrence name it as one of the most extraordinary ever seen. Summer temperatures in the world, but particularly in Europe, were the coldest on record between 1766 and 2000. Evidence suggests that this anomaly, consisting of an overall drop from 0.7 to 1.2 degrees Fahrenheit, was caused by a volcanic winter. The sun, blocked from the ash and debris of the Mount Tambore eruption, led to the eradication of summer weather in 1816. In early June, northern England awoke to extreme frosts, snowfall, and frozen rivers that lasted well into August. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world in Philadelphia, the ice became so unmanageable that no herbs or vegetables could grow anymore. In addition, the sulfur dioxide gas that erupted into the stratosphere reacted with the water that helped crops grow, leading to widespread famine and demises across the northern hemisphere. These continent-wide food shortages and sudden climate change outbreaks also led to migration and religious revivals, as the people who experienced the year with no summer tried to make sense of the decaying world. 1520. Europeans bring smallpox to the Americas. In the 16th century, as Europeans made their way to the American continent, the settlers opened up new and previously unknown territories that increased trading. However, they also brought a lethal pathogen. Settlers believed that the smallpox virus had first infected humans 12,000 years ago, reaching Europe around the 6th century. However, as time went on, the Europeans' genetics began to assimilate the virus, making it less intense. On the other hand, the people from the Americas were mostly isolated from the continents where the disease had existed for millennia, leaving them defenseless against the virus. Thus, when the Europeans arrived in the Americas and brought smallpox with them, the indigenous people of the era did not fare well. In the old continent, the most common form of the virus took the lives of 30% of its victims, disfiguring and blinding many others. However, for the native people of North, Central, and South America, exposure to the new smallpox virus with the arrival of Spanish and Portuguese conquistadors resulted in devastating consequences. Beginning in 1520, a smallpox epidemic tore through the Incas, the Aztecs, and many other indigenous communities, losing about 90% of their people, a blow far more significant than any armed conflict. Although the spread of the virus did not go well for the natives, it did wonders for the Europeans, as the continent opened up for colonial expansion. It is difficult to accurately calculate how many people perished from the smallpox spread in America, but it could go as high as 20 million. 
Thank you for watching my video. Before you go, don't forget to like it and leave us a comment below. Also hit the bell icon to be the first to know of all our newest content, and subscribe to all our Doc Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.